Welcome to Viama Thesis. I'm Stephen Anthony Orzel, and we'll be continuing our video series on the ancient philosophy of mathematics. In this second video, we're going to be looking at the mathematical philosophy of Proclus. Not all of it, of course, because it's so vast. Just the um, basic ideas, sort of laying some groundwork for what we'll do later. Um, so, again, just to review on Proclus, uh, Proclus lived in the 5th century AD in Athens. He wrote massive, massive amounts of writing. He was a very, very prolific writer, although much of his writing has been lost to history. He did write many commentaries on the dialogues of Plato. But those weren't the only commentaries that he wrote. He also wrote a commentary on the first book of Euclid's Elements. Now, it wasn't just a commentary on Euclid, because in this he also gives a systematic philosophy of mathematics. And in fact, it's the only systematic philosophy of mathematics we have from antiquity, which grounds mathematics into a metaphysical hierarchy, which we're going to look at today. So this metaphysical hierarchy that Proclus uses to classify mathematics in a metaphysical sense goes like this. At the top level we have intellect. The Greek word is nous. Next is understanding. The Greek is dianoia. And at the bottom level we have opinion. And the Greek is doxa. It's supposed to be an A. Doxa, and so I'll probably use these terms interchangeably. Now, Proclus categorizes mathematics here at the second level uh, for uh, dianoia. He's, he doesn't just dogmatically impose this, he actually goes through a dialectic and shows that mathematics has to be in the understanding because it's below intellect and above opinion. So I'm going to um, outline that idea for you here. In order to do that, we need to look at what are the characteristic properties of the objects studied by these different levels. So with the intellect, the objects that it studies are characterized by Simplicity, or I'll just say this, that they're um, simple, they're incomposite, it means they aren't composed of parts, and also um, indivisible. Similar idea characteristic properties of the objects studied by Dianoia have these properties. They're unchangeable, stable, and incontrovertible. That means it can't be proven wrong. Once a mathematical proof, uh, proof is established, that's it for eternity. And then the characteristic properties of the objects studied by opinion are this, that they're divisible, they have composition, and differences or differentiation. Okay, so Proclus's dialectic is to show that mathematical objects fit into understanding because they're below intellect and above opinion. They're below intellect because they don't match up with these characteristic properties of the intellect. And they're above opinion because they're superior to the characteristic properties of opinion. So let's sketch that. What we're going to show first is that mathematical objects are below the level of nous, 
which I'll abbreviate with the less than. And the reason is this, that uh, mathematical objects are not indivisible. And also they are inferior in simplicity. They do have simplicity, but not the way intellect has simplicity. So the difference is kind of like this, that the Platonic forms subsist at the level of nous, and things like mathematical um, theorems and mathematical objects subsist at the level of dianoia. The difference is sort of like this. The Platonic form of the circle is just a pure idea. It doesn't have a shape or anything like that, which is kind of hard to understand at first. We normally think of, uh, well, a circle, of course it has to have shape. If there's no shape to it, then it doesn't make sense to call it a circle. But there's actually an idea there. And the idea is something sort of like, um, if we just think of, okay, there's this thing, and all of the points are at the same distance from a center point. Well, that's just an idea. There's no reference to shape there. Uh, but the geometers will want to go into um, actually looking at a circle and talking about its center, its radius and diameter, its circumference, and things like this. Looking at formulas like C equals pi times D for the circumference and diameter, or the area equals pi r squared. This is what geometry wants to do with a circle. It doesn't care about the platonic form of the circle. Now, in a sense, mathematical objects are noose-like because of their immateriality, which is not what opinion can do. The other half is going to say this, that math is above doxa. Reason being is that mathematical objects are immaterial. And they are superior in precision. There's no, there's not the level of precision when you have opinion. This is sort of like sense perception, things like that. Uh, mathematical objects are superior in their precision than anything studied through the physical world. Uh, but also mathematical objects are doxa-like. In what sense do we have this? Is that because mathematical objects are extended and divisible, things like this. This is why when I talk about a circle, um, it actually has an extension into space. Okay, and that um, is opposed to objects in use which have no extension into space and are just totally non-spatial. So that's the basic idea of Proclus's argument to show that mathematics has to fit at the level of dianoia. When mathematicians do their work, they are using their dianoia. Now there is a kind of mathematics that will uh, bring these levels as sort of like, a, like an ascension, uh, uh, approaching the one, sort of uh, in, in, in a um, sense like that. And what is, what I'm talking about here is that, well, you can study things like, okay, I can draw a circle. Okay, that's really opinion. This isn't really a perfect circle here. I'm using my sense perception to get at that. But then in geometry, I can look at uh, calculating its circumference and things like that. But at the highest level, I can actually ascend to the platonic form of the circle. And that is going to have to come about through meditation and things like that. So this is just a sketch of Proclus's basic, basic philosophy of math. Later on, we'll look at things like uh, meditation for how we can lift from understanding up into intellect.